Hello, friends. It's Chopper. I think like, we need to get as many therapists as possible on the scene. And they're like, what are can you we turn this? Can we turn this hostage crisis into a Montessori school? <laughs> what, they're like, uh, what, are, what are you doing? And he's just like, uh, we, have con- we need to maintain control of the situation. And like the other tougher cop is like, what do you mean control? We have no control. We've, yeah, we've let the criminals run wild. And this is, this is the result. And right as they say that, a sort of... Uh, I don't know, uh, like gre- the the car from the like the John Travolta drives in the movie Grease just yeah. b- I think roars into the parking lot like a sort of like a souped up you know 1930s sort of like a muscle car speedster. Yeah, it's a rockabilly car. It's a it is the ideal rockabilly. Yeah, car. yeah. It's the only thing that's missing is like the flame paint job on the side. That um, is true. Kind of kind of fucked up. They didn't so have that. So th- th- this totally out of place. It's a 1950 Mercury Monterey Coupe. Just look that yeah, up. Yeah, it's one of those cars that weighs approximately twenty five thousand pounds. <laughs> you would drive it. You would drive it to an elevated hill, and uh, you know you would say something about how you you know you hope that uh, McCarthy can get all those Jews out of the State Department. And you'd make out with your girlfriend, and within a week you would probably be murdered by a train and immortalized in song. <laughs> okay. So uh, yes, th- th- this this rockabilly rockabilly tank roars into the parking lot screeches to a halt pulls up camera focuses right in on the vanity license plate which reads oh oh some 50 <laughs> that's a w s o m 50 the thing he is and his iq <laughs> <laughs> definitely the kind of thing that a, a fully adult human man yeah. would put on their license plate this uh, so- is a movie about a baby who is a cop <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's like they, they don't say it in the movie, but it's sort of implied that there was a big style uh, wish that happened. I went to be a cop like a 12 year old kid did and, and they woke up in Stallone's body and he's like, oh, I'm going to get a cool old car and I'm going to have it say awesome 50 and I'm going to get a gun with pearl handles and a cobra on it. And I'm going to wear sunglasses all the time. I'm going to wear uh, cool black gloves. I'm going to put my gun right next to my dick at so, all times. And yes. possibly the most puzzling thing, I'm going to have a matchstick in my mouth, yes. like a cigarette at all times. Out of the rockabilly tank steps Marion Cobra Cabretti. Marion Cobra Cabretti. The LAPD's first, last, and only line of defense against crime. In fact, he's the only cop in the LAPD who fights criminals at all. No, right? the rest of them at are all. just asking people how their day is, offering them welfare um, checks. And, and as Matt has already described, it, it 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 bears emphasizing his Stallone's look in this movie. Unbelievable! He steps out of the car. He's, he's wearing gigantic mirrored sunglasses, a full black duster, um, like tight tight jeans, super tight jeans, super that, tight that jeans. Eighties blue, that eighties blue that's almost white. Yeah, um, a matchstick, sort of like sticking out of the corner of his mouth, like a silk black. A button-up shirt that's like all puffy, like a pirate shirt. Uh huh. Um, very important for the movie. Leather gloves. Leather gloves. Mm-hmm. At no point in this movie, which is about ninety minutes, it's a tight ninety. At no point in any scene in this movie, and I looked, I checked for it. Does Stallone ever take off his leather gloves? Yep. And best of all, as we said, his signature forty-five handgun, fucking pearl handle grip, stuck. And you know, I don't know. I don't know if you, if you listeners, if you guys are gun guys or whatever. But I've watched enough movies to know a forty-five is a beast of a handgun. It's a large fucking gun. Yeah. It, it is very heavy. No holster. No holsters are for fucking pussy. No holster. Just straight in the front of his pants. <laughs> just right next to his dick. Right on top of his hog. Right on top of his hog. Like a this sa- is- safety off. Yep. Gun cocked. One in the pipe. Yep, this just is, line. Yeah. Just just. Just pulsing yeah. with, with heat next to his next to his member. Well, this is this shows how little exposure to culture you guys actually have. This is known as an Italian circumcision. <laughs> <laughs> when over the course of the year, the hot barrel of your gun melts your foreskin off. So uh, he pulls up. It's the rockabilly cop. He's got his dick, and it's sort of like. He looks like he stepped out of the William Friedkin Al Pacino movie Cruising. Yeah. Yes. And like and like every item, like every single one of his like uh, sort of sartorial affectations is some sort of code. Yes. It can be read as like, oh, if you 
if you have a revolver with a pearl handle and a cobra on it, it means you're buying. Yeah. And if uh, you have an automatic with a, <laughs> a regular rubber grip, it means you're selling. Yeah. If the uh, if the if the uh, matchstick is in your left side of your mouth, that means that you like to get pissed on. And if it's in the other side of your mouth, it means just you still like to get pissed on. <laughs> But you're into Uncle Play. <laughs> yeah, well, we will get, we'll to, get into that. We'll, we'll, get, into we'll that. get to. I mean, there's, there's so many veins of Chapo interests coursing through this movie. Um, it's well um, marbled. Uh, um, being gay, <laughs> 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 shooting guns, being cool, <laughs> being cool, vibing um, with your uncle. Yeah, and the, and then and then Uncle Magic. There's so much Uncle Magic in this movie, that, but we will get to it. And also, the main character um, sort of reminds me of. I don't know. No, he doesn't. <laughs> one of one of the oh, one, one of our person well, yeah, he's he's person like well, that person. Um, that yeah. uh, that person's actually significantly better adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> so Marion Cobra Crobretti goes into uh, the supermarket to um, protect the private property from it being um, turned into a people's food dispensary <laughs> by um, <laughs> by, a, by by the comrade <laughs> by the by by the comrade who's fighting for a new world order, um, and he's like. Uh, you know, he, he gets on the, uh, the 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 supermarket PA system, and he's like, uh, "What does he say?" He's like, "Hey, poke, I'm a cop here to yeah. kill you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like, bad. Don't do yeah. anything crazy stand now. By. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. you stand by and let yourself die, me. <laughs> no, but the cool the coolest scene in it is like while he's like sort of like scoping out, like doing like doing like stealth techniques. He just cracks a tall boy and just takes a sip out of a totally warm beer. Yep. dude's rock. Yeah, he just just takes a sip out of a tall boy. <laughs> And at this point, like the um, the comrade um, uh, has has some sort of like homemade bomb, and he's got like a you know a whole bunch of like women and children cowering in the corner, and he's like, "I'll kill him, man! I'll, I'll fucking do him in! I'll blow this whole place up! Yeah, I'll blow this whole I'll blow blah, you know, yeah." And then like you know, out out of the meat locker, like S- Stallone comes in. Uh, it should be noted that they've already cut the power to this place, so it's completely dark, and he's still wearing sunglasses. Yeah. Yes. Trying but to, try, yeah. Trying to, like, you know, do uh, negotiate a hostage situation where you may have to shoot someone with, like, a gun pointed at someone's head. You know, classic movie thing. Definitely don't want to take your sunglasses off. Not at all. Because then you wouldn't look cool. And that's that's your main advantage. So, uh, so um, the comrade says, the, the, the Antifa guy says, he's like, don't go any closer, man. He's like, I'll blow this whole place up. And Sloan goes, go ahead. Auto shop here. Boom. That's oh. that's one, that's a great one liner. Cool dry wit. And then he's like he's like get the TV cameras in here. This is direct action. I need to bring my message to the people. And Stallone goes, can't do that. I don't deal with psychos. I put them away. And the guy's like, I'm not a psycho. I'm a fucking hunter, man. I'm here. I'm here for fucking the DSA co- <laughs> I'm here for the DSA build coalition. <laughs> and then he's like, you're a disease, and I'm the cure. And then at that point, he just sort of takes a pocket knife out, throws it at his chest, and then shoots him out. This is that. infuriating to me. So they show him while he's talking to this guy. He puts his gun back in his belt, and then he sneaks his uh, buck knife out of his pocket. And then s- s- behind his back, he unfolds it. And then he throws it at the guy and stabs him in the chest. And then he pulls his gun out and shoots him. How much could he have been fucking practicing throwing a goddamn knife like at hip level at another guy for that to be a more like a higher percentage play than just shooting him? It required the same amount of action. It was infuriating. Matt, I think we can take as read from this movie that most of the time that Stallone is not on the streets, he's practicing knife throwing. Okay. (laughs) I would yeah. just love it. It's just like he he throws the knife and it just bounces off his chest, <laughs> like the, when it, it went it it landed the wrong way. Yeah, but like while he was distracted by that, he could shoot him. Yeah, well, just shoot him to begin with, and of course, five shots, bang, 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 and then immediately puts the gun back right on top of his dick. That yeah, thing yeah. is just a smoldering nub. He's just got a little <laughs> a little burn tissue nub where his dick should be by now. Well, when you have a gun that big in your crotch all the time, you don't really need a dick. It's true. Like, it does thing. all the work. Okay, so, so from there, like, you know, he saves the day, goes out into the parking lot. Another classic 80s action movie moment. He's thronged by the media who's like, ah, uh, uh, but sir, but sir, what about the rights of the person you just killed? <laughs> uh, I'm and gay, like, sir. I'm yeah. Gay. Like, he's like, well, what, what, who made you? What about due process? Like, why? why sir, sir. Why, why didn't you let him kill the hostages? Sir, uh, my diaper is full. Could you please change me? I'm a big baby. And then like, no, they're yelling. Like the, the press is just yelling at him because they didn't give him due process. And then, uh, then of course, he grabs one of the uh, one of the one of the, the reporters. He grabs grabs a reporter, p- 
pulls his face down and then like rips the sheet off the fucking corpse of the dude that the that um the antifa comrade um blew away yeah. for i don't know yeah for the hoarding Eichmann that he for, for hoarding yeah. milk or whatever yeah, yeah he was making sure people wouldn't get grapefruits that guy knew what he was getting into when he signed up to work at the grocery store <laughs> and he's like yeah you're right why did you tell that to his family <laughs> It was just like, well, I mean, I, again, like Stallone wrote this movie again. Yeah. I need, I need, yeah, I, I need to stress that this movie is a pure product from the mind of Sylvester Stallone. Oh, yeah. And I, I just like that, like he thinks that, like that is like the perfect retort to people who are like, um, uh, but sir, we live in a civil society, and the cops just can't murder people at a whim. And he's like, tell that to their family. Yeah, and I'll just be like, well, I mean, that's not that totally inappropriate thing to say to someone, even if they've been a victim of a crime. Yeah, but anyway, no, and they still then, need. Have the laws come on, and then and of course the cuck, the cuck police chief who's like, You're, damn it, Cobra! Oh, no, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't, uh, you didn't enroll him in Obamacare like I would have. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad about this. I'm gonna go vote for Walter Mondale. <laughs> He's like, Cobra, my wife's boyfriend was cooking dinner tonight. You made me miss it because I have, to have all the paperwork I'm gonna have to fill out now. I was gonna play Smash with my polycule, and now I can't even get home. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, you know, Cobra's like, well, pff, another day of uh, being a police officer <laughs> done, which, again, mainly just like his day was like, I'm driving around in a muscle car until I'm called to just like roar into a parking lot, get out, walk into a fucking building and just shoot someone <laughs> and in, in a hostage home. situation. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Quit time. Yeah. It's yeah. like time to, time to knock off for the day. <laughs> He goes home and we... And, then and of course he lives in Malibu on the beach. I think it's supposed to be uh, Venice. All right, or, Venice. Uh, yes. Of course he lives in Venice. Cool. Yeah. Cool thing for the cool rockabilly cop. He's yeah. a cool rockabilly cop. Okay, so, like, so what happens now when Cobra comes home is a, about a five five minute sequence that stands alone as one of the most insane things ever put on film. Wait, so like, but the, there's a thing before that that's okay, insane too. Yeah. Remember? Wait, okay. So no, no, no. I mean, like, I'm talking about the whole thing from yeah, him the driving whole, up from the, the start to beginning. Okay, from okay, start okay, to the okay, beginning, yeah, like yeah. just like this sequence of events that happens it's one baffling, after the other. You know, it's movies are about choices, and every one of these choices is, is needs to be questioned. So, significantly. Uh, so he, so he, so he's got he's in the rockabilly tank, and he's like looking for a parking space, and it's clearly the parking space is too small for him to fit in because there's another car, uh, just sort of like sitting right there. That's like filled with some like uh, like some some cholo like Mexican guys who yeah. are like you know hanging out no no good Nick types, but clearly like it's you know they're in the parking space like he can't yeah. fit his car in there so rather than just be like uh like or he asks him to move later, it or yeah. just like or maybe drive around the block for a second he uses his rockabilly muscle to like um just sort of like rrr, like roar it and physically push the other car out of his way yeah. this is um. This is what intelligent film critics will notice as the film's psychological elements. Every film has things on the surface, but there's also psychology. The psychology here is that um, everything is his penis, yeah. the car especially, oh, yeah. and um, him physically moving the other car from behind, the car that's owned by um, the sort of Mexican guys, yeah. is him symbolically penetrating and dominating them. I mean, it's pretty clear. He gets, so he gets out of the car and like the Mexican guy's like, hey, pinche, like a fucking asshole. Like rightly so. Why did yeah, you, he hit his car. Why, why did you just do that, asshole? Then Stallone, still wearing leather gloves, sort of like not just grabs a cigarette out of the guy's mouth, but sort of like covers his mouth, rubs his face, rubs his bit. whole face with his hand, grabs a cigarette out of his mouth, throws it on the ground, says you shouldn't smoke. It's bad for your health. Then grabs his sort of like a like like wife beater t-shirt rips it all the way down his chest yeah revealing the love mic <laughs> that the actor <laughs> is wearing in the scene taped to his chest i like to think that that was not sloppy filmmaking that he was actually an undercover cop and he and cobra just blew his entire assignment and was going to get him killed i think that's funny um yeah so yeah felix so what, what do you think about the way cobra displayed dominance in that scene well, um, look, anytime a guy is trying to alpha you and, you know, you're always guys, you know, this when someone is just parked in a spot near you, they're basically trying to sodomize you. You have to dom them back. 